Good afternoon. Gentlemen, we are here to learn Torah, to get closer to the Kaddish Baruch Hu Be'ezer Hashem. We are learning in Yaakov. We're on Brochus, Dav Zayin Amud Aleph, for those of you who are writing down where we are. And Be'ezer um, Hashem, we should have Siyat Dishmaya. Today we are entering one of the most, I don't want to say controversial, because it's not that controversial, but it's going to ruffle feathers. One of the most important topics in understanding Judaism. Um, it's a very, very famous Gemara. There are lots of different shitas, different ways of looking at the question. And um, we're going to look at it in one way, maybe two ways. And if we have time, more ways. Uh, but I think it will require some thinking on your part before you sort of start yelling answers uh, of what you think the Gemara means. So we're starting. We discussed two days ago, if you remember, that the Kaddish Baruch Hu, Kiv Yachol, gets angry and that there is a certain unit of time, which we saw is 158,888. That little bit of a millisecond that the Kaddish Baruch Hu gets upset. And Bilam was trying to figure that out, to find the exact instant where he could say, curse the Jewish people. We're turning that off. Did you press off? Uh, yeah. Okay, and you know when you press the same button, so you're turning it on, turning it off, turning it on, turning it off. It's one of those things that when you, it used to be that if you are in the car and you do unlock and the person lifts the handle on the same time, it won't open. You just say, listen, just sit on the curb, wait, I will open the door. That it's fine. We'll manage so the Gemara told us there is an instant of time, a unit of time that the Kaddish Baruch Hu gets angry, and when is it? It's the first three hours of the day, and so on. And then we have the story of Yeshua ben Levi who wanted to punish someone who was bothering him, and then he fell asleep, right? It didn't work out. And that taught us a very, very important principle, that we should not want people to be punished because of us. Whatever the Kaddish Baruch Hu is going to do, let the Kaddish Baruch Hu do. Let, but as far as I'm concerned, I know that my avoidance, my service to Hashem is to forgive every Jew. <clears throat> so we have a version when we go to bed, right? We say, I'm forgiving everybody and anybody who harmed me, who hurt me, who affected my honor, embarrassed me, all those sort of things. We just get it, let it go. We don't want anybody to be punished because of us. And we certainly hope that the others are doing the same, that they are also saying the same thing because we all have things that we regret, right? All, all of us have things that we carry with us that we wish we did better, that we could be better people, treat others right, and so on. Okay, so that was two days ago. For those of you who are tuning in on the video, why is it two days ago and not yesterday? Because yesterday was the year side of the Rambam, and we recorded a shear on the Rambam. If you're interested in that shear, that should be online. Tana Mishmed Rabbi Meir. So the one of the Tanaim in Rabbi Meir's yeshiva, has a different view of God getting angry. It's a different view. And he says, According to Rabbi Meir, that Gadosh Baruch Hu gets angry when people worship the sun. Okay, so as soon as sunrise kings, whether they're kings in the east or in the west, would set their crowns on their head and would bow down to the sun. 
Um, and that is the trigger for the Kaddish Baruch Hu to be angry. For those of you who um, were here for yesterday for the, uh, the Rambam Shir, so the Rambam, if you're interested, he has a halachas of Avodah Zarah, the laws of idol worshipping. But the first chapter is a history of idol worshipping. And he explains how did, pe- how did we get from Adam Arishon, or even Noah, which everybody knew, right? Noah and his children, they, they started the world fresh. How did we get to Tower of Babel? How do we get to idolatry? If everybody knew that God exists. How did we end up worshiping the various luminaries? Right? And if you listen to, if you study a little bit of Greek and Roman mythology, you will see that many of the deities are represented by heavenly bodies. Also, some of them are very famous days of the week in English. Sunday, Monday, right? The other ones are Nordic gods. So, explains the Rambam, is that people believed in God, but they said God is so great, so powerful, so big, that He must have established assistance. He appointed various ministers to run different aspects of the reality. And because He placed these vice regents, these viziers, these ministers, Let's leave him alone because he's probably very, very busy and we will just pray, ask for what we need from the sun, right? We want rain. Let's pray to the power of rain. Let's, we want less sunshine, global warming. Let's pray to that. We want things to be cooler, warmer, however that you want, right? You want fire to be easily lit, don't make it too difficult, so pray to the, to the fire god, whatever it was. And that's how the mistake, so that they started worshipping these intermediaries, not because they didn't believe in God. They knew about God, but they wanted to honor God by respecting or paying homage to the ministers that God put in place. And that was the beginning. And then from that, people just sort of kept praying to these entities and forgot about Kaddish Baruch Hu. And that was the trigger for God to get angry according to Rabbi Meir. Questions? Excellent. Saxton, no question. And we, we had to give you an honorable mention. It's for Shiduchim, it's good, because everybody's going to watch this and say, who's that Saxton that he keeps talking about? And now if you do want an honorable mention, please make your cash payments before this year, and I'm happy to mention your name for a fee. Okay? Okay, Mr. Bruce? Okay, good. Rabbi Yochanan Mishum Rabbi Yoisi. Rabbi Yochanan says in the name of Rabbi Yoisi, Tova mardus achaz belibo shel adam yoiser mikama malku yois. Shenemav, because the Posik says in Oshea, veritfa et maaveha, Rabbi Yochanan brings a tradition from Rabbi Yossi that is, I think, one of the best Musr ideas that I've seen in a long time. So what does Rabbi Yossi say? Tova mardus achas. Then many malkiyos. Malkiyos are lashes. Lashes. Right? The based in, if you do certain things that you shouldn't be doing, the based in, when we had a Sanhedrin, people would get lashes. Right? Remember being spanked by your parents? Right? The good old days. That's when parents actually spanked their kids. I'm not saying, I'm not taking a position whether that's we should do or we shouldn't do. But that used to be the way that people raise their kids, you got a patch. And so, Rabbi Yaisi is saying that one, one thought of regret and humility that you have on your own is better 
than several lashes that someone would give you. Right? All of you that are in the shir, in the, our program in our Samach, you are here not because somebody gave you lashes and said, you better go to our Samach, right? The Happy Light Institute and get yourself back to normal. None of you are court appointed except maybe one, but I can't mention your name because your parents might be upset at it. We all are here, right? All of us are here because there was Mardut Achat. We made a decision. We had a recognition that it's time to change our ways. We didn't need an external force to change us. Right? It is something that you decided. Right, Dovi, you came to me and says, Rabbi, I want to come to Yeshiva. I want to figure things out. That's what the Gemara is talking about. Where you say, okay, I want time out for my life. I want to figure this out. I want to connect to the Kaddish Baruch Hu. I want to be able to learn Torah. I want to be a better person. Right, Jackson? Yeah. That is much better than lashes. That's much better than punishment that are coming from an external source. And what's the evidence for this? It's a pasuk from the book of Hosea. Hosea was one of the prophets, the early prophets of the Jewish people. And he received a prophecy from the Kaddish Baruch Hu, where the Kaddish Baruch Hu told him to marry a woman of ill repute. Do we all know what that means, or do we need to have details? What? I'm sorry? You want to know the Pasuk? I will tell you so you can look it up. It's in the second chapter. He married a woman that was a professional. Let's call it this way. And she would go with her lovers. Okay? And the Mephorshim asked, how could a tzaddik, who was a prophet, could marry such a thing? And some Mephorshim say it was a, more of a mashal. It was, what, we're not taking a stance on that. It's not a shear on Hosea. But the Pasuk says that she pursued her lovers as opposed to staying home and make dinner, take care of the kids. She had a couple of kids. Okay? So she pursued her Beloved, but they ignored her. They didn't want her. And so she said, I shall go back to my first husband because it would be, my situation would be better than now. So we could look at this Pasuk is where we are. That is, we have the Yetzir Hara and the Yetzir Hara is tempting us to do certain things, to go explore certain things, right? Certain parts of the city. But at some point it clicks that, you know, I'm really going to waste my time if I go there. Yeah, it might be fun. But there's more to life than just fun. And I want to take the opportunity to better myself. I want to be able to make myself the person that God wants me to be. And for that, that is called Mardus. That is when you sort of pull yourself back and say, hey, it's not that somebody grabbed you in the street and said, hey, you better clean up yourself, you know. If not, we're going to break your legs. And so you have to enter the Jewish Witness Protection Program and go to some yeshiva and try to sort of blend in. No, it's coming from a real desire, a real motivation to change. And Rabbi Yossi says, that's much better than anything, even Yisurim. Right? The Kaddish Baruch Hu can bring upon us, we already did that sugya, it's earlier dafs, that the Kaddish Baruch Hu sometimes brings Yisurim on Sadiqim. Right? Yisurim are suffering. All sorts of things happen to us. And we might say, okay, so that is trying to get us to do tshuva. Rabbi Yossi says, yeah, that could be seen as lashes. And Mardus, the fact that you bring yourself without the Yisur, without all the accompaniments, 
that is going to be much, much better and has a much greater weight, much greater weight for you to succeed. And if you ask me, Rabbi, okay, so what are the two first things that I need to work, work on? I would say one is humility and the other one, self-discipline. Humility is a quality that is required in order to learn from somebody else. You cannot learn from anybody unless you're humble. Because by learning from somebody else, you understand you're not the expert. You're not sure what to do. And it's whether you come to class and you hear a rabbi speak, or you're sitting with a text and let the text teach you. Right? It requires humility for the, your education to work. But then you have to apply it. Then you have to apply it. You have to have the self-discipline and not to be all over the place. You have to start calculating your day. When am I going to start my day? Am I going to start my day at 10.30? Or am I going to start my day at 8.30? And that you have to have self-discipline and when you end your day. And how you end your day. You want to end your day in a nice, relaxing, happy way. So that you start ending the day nicely and comfortably. And not stressed and not too... Self-discipline, gentlemen. That for us to become the better Jews that we can be, requires self-discipline. Okay. We continue in the Gemara. The Gemara says, Rish So usually you know when the Rabbi Yochanan and Rish Lakish speak, they usually have a Machlaikis. And we're going to try to figure out what the Machlaikis is between Rabbi Yochanan and Rish Lakish. But again, Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan from Rabbi Yossi is saying, one Mardut is better than Kama Malkuyos. Kama is a few. A few lashes. Rashlaki Shamar Yoiser Mimea Malkuyos. One Mardu that you take up on yourself is better than a hundred lashes. What's the maximum number of lashes that a person could get according to the Torah? 39. 39. How many 39s are in a 100? Two and a half. Two and a half. Those are a lot of lashes. How many lashes do you think you can take? Um, One? All of them? All of them. 39. Oh my God. That's good for Shiduchim. Your mother-in-law is going to like that. <laughs> so... Rashlaki says, and then he gives a different pasuk. And he says, One rebuke is better than a hundred lashes to a fool. There are some people, I don't want to give examples of individuals that I know. But, you know, there's some kids, no matter what you tell them, like, listen, don't stick your finger in there, you're going to get electrocuted, and no matter what, they just won't listen. And at some point, what do you do? You just let them, go ahead, makasha, right? And the kid, ah! and then they're like, oh, you're not going to do that again, are you? Right, and then he complains to his mother, and then you're in trouble, because why didn't? The mean man didn't tell me he's going to hurt. <laughs> so Rish Lakish is saying someone who is wise Mavin, somebody who is wise it's, if you give him rebuke once you say hey this is not how we behave hey this is not right what you're doing is not right shape up it's better than a hundred lashes given to a fool because in order to change you have to have das you have to have the seichel, the intellectual capability of understanding. And if someone refuses to see what he's doing wrong, refuses to repair his ways to become a better person, there's nothing you can do. It's like beating a dead horse. 
Is there really a machloikis between Rish Lakish and Rabbi Yochanan here? So, it's a very interesting question that the Mephorshim is talking about this. That according to Rish Lakish, that is saying that even, even if Yusurim are going to befall you to try to get you to do tshuva, right? What is tshuva? People always say the word repentance. Okay, I'm not so sure what the origin of the term, but it's not exactly what the term means. Tshuva means to return back on track, which means that you are facing the wrong way, and therefore you have to turn towards the Kaddish Baruch That is tshuva, return. You're over here, you're going that way. Come back, you got to go this way. And there are two ways to get somebody to turn around. You could say, hey, excuse me, and use your words. And if he's smart enough, he'll listen to you. And he won't blame you. For what? Brainwashing him. He would understand you're trying to do what's best for him. Or, you're going to hit the guy. Hey, what are you doing? It's dangerous going this route. So Rishlakish is saying that even if a person does tshuva from Yusurim because of suffering, is still and a lower madrega than somebody who has the intellectual capabilities of understanding what they're doing, how they're living. Right? Living la vida loca is not how one should live their life. Right? Okay, questions. Do you, did you have a question? So you... So that explains a lot. That explains a lot. You want to mention your name on the videotape? <laughs> People will know to avoid you for shiduchim. They were just not. Yeah, I'm sure you're the only guy that uh, did this in the history of uh, the state of New York. The address is. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay, we continue. Vama Rabbi Yochanan Mishum Rabbi Yosi. So Rabbi Yochanan is bringing another tradition from Rabbi Yosi. And this is the topic of our shir today. Shloshah advarim bikesh Moshe lifnei Hakadosh Baruch Hu v'nasan lo. Moshe Rabbeinu asked the Kadosh Baruch Hu for three things, and all three were given to him. So what did he ask? Somebody want to guess? No, he did not ask for bagel, lox, and cream cheese, right? Because that's farty. And of course, I was told today that Moshe Rabbeinu was farty, and he had a whole raya for it. So, okay, I don't know if that's a good raya or a bad raya, but I certainly will not repeat the raya. <laughs> so, three things. What? Moshe Rabbeinu asked for the divine presence to rest on the Jewish people. And it was given. Right? Check Exodus chapter 33. Hashem, Rabbeinu says, I, we want you to be with us wherever we go. Walk with us. To have the Shekhinah on the Jewish people. And that was given. Rabbeinu asked, please don't place your Shekhinah on idol worshippers. Okay. It's a very, very interesting question, discussion of what was, what's going on. Did he have to ask this? this? Was it something that God was planning not to do? That is, why would God rest the Shekhinah on idol worshippers? And then he says, what's the proof for that? We should be in the same chapter, in chapter 33, in the book of Shmois, in Exodus. It says, make us separate and different from the non-Jews. And that was given to us. And lastly, he asked 
to understand the drachim, the, the way that the Kaddish Baruch Hu runs the world. And that was given to him. Because he said, Hodeini na drachecha. Show me your derech, your path. How do you run the world? And now the Gemara explains what that means. Amar lefanav, Moshe Rabbeinu says before the Kaddish Baruch Hu, Ribono shel olam. What's Ribono shel olam? Master of the universe. Mipnei ma yesh tzadik v'tov lo v'yesh tzadik v'ra lo. Yesh rasha v'tov lo v'yesh rasha v'ra lo. Moshe Rabbeinu asked, I want to understand something. Why is it that in your world you have a tzadik? What's a tzadik? A righteous person that has a good life. And then you have another tzaddik that has a difficult life, ralo. And then you have a rasha, the tovlo. What's a rasha? An evil, wicked person, that he has a good life, and a rasha that has a bad life. Why do you have these four categories? There's a whole question in. Jewish theology of why do bad things happen to good people? You ever heard of that? Mm-hmm. That's what Moshe Rabbeinu is trying to understand. Why do bad things happen to good people? And why do good things happen to really bad people? Why? Where is it? It comes from a sense of justice of understanding that the Kaddosh Baruch Hu has a way of running this world, and we're trying to understand how do you run this world. So, Amarlo, the Kaddosh Baruch Hu says to Moshe Rabbeinu, Tzadik v'tov lo, a tzadik, a righteous person that is, has a good life, is a tzadik ben tzadik. Is a tzadik whose father was a tzadik. And Tzadik Viralo, you already know the answer. Tzadik Ben Rasha. And if there's a Tzadik that is having a difficult life, it means that he's a Tzadik, but he's a son of a Rasha. Okay, and what about a Rasha Vitovlo? So then he's a Rasha Ben Tzadik. And if he's a Rasha Viralo, He's a Russia, he's a wicked person who has a difficult, bad life. He's a Russia ben Russia. That's the first answer of the Gemara. Then the Gemara doesn't stop here. The Gemara continues and brings a different opinion. Amar ma, tzadik vetovlo, tzadik ben tzadik, tzadik veralo. Tzadik ben Rasha, ain't he? Like, really? This is how you want to explain the differences? By blaming it on their forefathers? That doesn't seem fair. Are you responsible for what your father did? Of course not. Are you responsible if, you know, should you reap the fruits? Your father was a Tzadik and you're a Rasha? That should determine the life that you have? The Gemara says, "Aini Haktiv." It says, "Poked avon avot al bonim," in the Yud Gimel Midot of Rachamim. Karash Baruch Hu says he visits the sins of the fathers on the sons, and then it says in Deuteronomy, in Dvarim Chavdalet in twenty-four, and bonim lo yumsu al avos. Children shall not die for the sins of their parents. And so how, the Ramin and Kroya Dode, the Gemara says, how do you then read the two psukim together? In one psukim, it seems to say that children do pay for the sins of their father. And in another psukim, it says they do not. So how do those two go together? So says the Gemara, lo kashi, am shanina, lo kashi, ahak shochzin maaseh avoyseim biyadehim. Ahak shainusin ochzin maaseh avoyseim biyadehim. When do they suffer for what their parents did? When they continue along the path of their parents. If they have wicked parents and they continue in their wickedness, they will get punished also for that. 
Yet, if their parents were wicked and they don't follow the paths of their parents, then they do not pay for the sins of their parents. Okay? So the Gemara is bringing a kasha against the definition of the term tzaddik v'ralo and tzaddik v'tovlo, rasha v'tovlo and rasha v'ralo, to, to look at the parents. And so the Gemara wants to say something else. But rather, this is what this means. Tzadik v'tovlo is a tzadik gomor. What's a tzadik gomor? Some, a tzadik, a righteous person that has fully perfected himself. Fully perfected himself. Gomor. The tzaddik v'ralo is tzaddik sheno gomur. He's not fully complete. He's a tzaddik. But he's not fully complete. What does that mean? Well, the easiest way to understand it is that he sins every once in a while. Slips up. Let's not give ideas to people who are watching the video at home of what sins a person should do. Right? We don't want to give anybody ideas, but I'm sure people can think of little slip-ups here and there. Nothing major. We're not talking about shvichus domim, spilling blood. We're not talking about arayas. We're not even talking about stealing or, you know, bimechal al-shabbos. No, we're talking about little things. Okay? Like what? Okay, since you're pushing me. Like not coming to class on time. Or... Not saying good morning to somebody who says good morning to you. Oh, good morning. What? Right? Somebody says, Shalom Aleichem. Say Shalom Aleichem. If you're not, that's a problem. You have to work on Midat Ben Adam Lechavero. So what's a Rasha Vetovlo? A wicked person that has a good life, what does that imply? The Gemara says, Rasha Sheno Gomor. He's not completely wicked. He does a lot of things that he shouldn't do. But he also gives tzedakah. Puts on tefillin, on Shabbos. He's trying. He's not there. Yeah, he's, he's, he's in the wrong column. Yeah, but he is working on himself. He's trying. He's trying. So he's Russia. Logomo. And therefore, is Russia Vitovlo. But then you have a Russia Shiralo. Right? And that is going to be a completely wicked person. And if you always want to think of examples of completely wicked people, for me, I find the stories of Zdom. Those Zdomnikers, the guys living in Zdom, those were people are just complete Rashaim in any way, shape, or form. And they guised it as a way of, you know, we have to protect our society, we have to protect our property, we can't have panda handling here. You can't collect tzedakah, no feeding the poor, certainly don't give them a place to stay. All the wonderful things that we know from Zdom v'Amura, those are, you could see, is a real problem for, for us as for being wicked. So, the Mepharshim wanted say that the categories of tzaddik v'ralo, tzaddik v'tovlo are referring to also different stages. A tzaddik v'tovlo is referring to a person who has so many zchuyot, so much blessing, that he is not only going to be rewarded in Olam Abba, 
but that he's also receiving the fruits over here in this world. Tzadik Veralo is, if we look at it as an incomplete Tzadik, he's still righteous, he's a big Tzadik, but he's got still room to grow. And the reason that he's a Hazra is because for whatever sins he did commit, what we want to do, at least from the eyes of the Kaddish Baruch Hu, is get rid of his sins in this world. So that when he gets to the next world, he doesn't have to go through the laundry service. Right? We don't want him to end up somewhere where it's a little hot. Dry heat. Right? And so, he is receiving the Yusuri and the suffering in this world. So that when he gets to Olam Abba, he will only will be in Gan Eden, in heaven. When we look at a Russia, since we said the Russia Logam, where he's not completely Russia, which means he's doing, he did some mitzvot. And since he did some mitzvot, what do we want to do? Kadosh Baruch Hu says, I have to reward him for this. I have to reward him for his mitzvot. But he's not on track to get into heaven. Because he's a Russia. And yeah, he might do mitzvot every once in a while. Let us pay his mitzvot in this. Although it's very hard to accept because the Gemara later says, right? Schar mitzvah b'hai al malaika. That really the reward for mitzvot cannot be in this world. But you're allowing him at least the fruits of those mitzvot. And therefore he has a good life. Tzadik rasha v'tov. But somebody who is a rasha, gomor, complete, is rasha v'ralo. Ralo in this world, v'ralo in the next world. Now we might say, that's kind of mean. Why is God doing that to him? Why can't God just forgive him? Just kumbaya, let's all be friends, right? Why can't we just all get along? Well, there are two midot that the Kaddish Baruch Hu runs this world. We've mentioned this many times. And it oscillates between chesed, or mercy, and deen, justice. You cannot have pure one of them. If you have justice alone, most people would not be alive in this world. Imagine if it would be immediately, you sin, boom, good morning. Right? Walking down the street, call them here, gone. Good morning. Come on, people at home are like, what's, what's the story with Golda Meir? There's some issues for some guys in the class they're working on. <laughs> I'm not mentioning any names. But it would be instantaneous. Midat Adin, the world would not exist. Midat Adin, if the Kaddish Baruch who ran the world according to Midat Adin, the world could not exist. But you couldn't also do chesed. Anything goes. You kill people. You steal. You do anything you want. That for sure would ruin not only the social order, but it would ruin, each person would ruin himself because it would be essentially the Las Vegas of the Yetzir Hara. Anything goes. Just keep doing worse and worse and worse. And so the Kaddish Baruch Hu needs he ran, runs this world with a balance between justice and mercy. Okay? And so to allow Rashaim to do whatever it is, the Ramchal says one of the gifts that the Kaddish Baruch Hu gave us is death. Because at least there's an end of how bad you could be. It's going to end. That is, if you're just going way, way out there, right? You keep going. Right, left New York, keep going, past Nebraska, uh, Wyoming. Right, just keep going and going all the way to Hawaii. And then you keep going. It, if you lived an eternal life, who knows where you would end up. 
But if there's an end, there's going to be, some, at some point, you're going to be held accountable to pull you back. And so the Kaddish Baruch Hu has to run this world with some measure of Mida Kenegid Mida. And therefore, when Moshe Rabbeinu is asking the Kaddish Baruch Hu, he says, I want to understand why. Why is it that some good people have a difficult life? There's another idea that sometimes the tzaddikim of the Gedolei Adol get Yisurim because of the generation. That since they are the people that lead the generation, and so therefore they suffer for the sins of the entire generation. That's how the Mephorshim explain what's going on here. The Gemara continues, And says the pliga the Rabbi Meir. The position of Rabbi Yaisi is different than Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Yaisi said Moshe Rabbeinu asked for three things, and he received all three. He asked for the Shechina to be with the Jewish people. He asked the Shechina should not be on idol worshippers, and that he wanted to understand how the Kaddish Baruch Hu runs the world. And according to Rabbi Yaisi. As reported by Rabbi Yochanan, he received all three. The Gemara says, the pliga the Rabbi Meir. Why? Two of the three requests were given, but one of his requests was denied. That is, Moshe Rabbeinu was not given. Yes. Yes, very good. Kolakavo, Jake. You want your last name for the tape? No? Humility, right? Humility. Ah, okay, fine. This is the chance. You could send the video to your mother and show her that you, you got all the answers. You're keeping the rabbis honest. Then she'll know why she had that payment for the electrical company. <laughs> With a shortage, you know. <laughs> So Rabbi Meir says, to they gave him Shneemar, Chanot Yet Asher Achun. I shall be merciful to whomever I choose. Af al pishe no hagun. Verichamti et Asher Achem. I have mercy to whoever I want, even though he doesn't deserve it. Which means the Kaddish Baruch Hu says to Moshe Rabbeinu, and hence to us, you can't understand the mysteries of my on Haga, my guidance of this world. Yes. I finished my thoughts. If people were not exposed to the Torah and the Torah, the Torah, the Torah, the Torah, not classify them as a Russia? Not necessarily. It's talu in another, it's dependent on another machloikis. If there is a concept of Tinoch Shinishba these days, or a captive baby, or not. On the side of the post that say there is a concept of Tinoch Shinishba, and therefore secular Jews who were raised in secular homes for two, three generations, right, and were sent to public school where they didn't have a chance to learn about the Torah and what it did mean to live a Jewish life, you can't really blame them. So in that sense, I don't think they would be considered Roshan. Good question. So did you... Listen, uh, again, one of the, one of the Mephorshim here discusses the tzaddik in Russia saying you might have a tzaddik that klapei shmaya with regard to ben adam l'chaveiro, he's not such a good person, right? Between human interactions. But to the Kaddosh Baruch Hu, he davens on time, puts on tefillin every day, he learns every day. But the way that he treats people, he doesn't treat them so nicely. But on the other hand, there's another person that's just the opposite. He's great with guys, provides them sandwiches, hangs out with them, gives them beer, right? All the free weed that you can get. But Lamai said the guy is not doing anything to the Kaddish Baruch Hu. And therefore you need both of them. All right, gentlemen, thank you. This is uh, first recorded. Let's see how things go. And we'll see you tomorrow.